Good morning, my name is Kelsey Smith. My husband and I and our two boys and this little one, boy or girl, we don't know, live in Highfield, Arkansas. We have a homestead and we're looking to share our lifestyle with you. About a week ago, we officially became dairy farmers, I guess you should say. Not quite though. My grandparents, they dairy farm generationally, milking 100 to 120 um, cows a day. And so their um, dairy farming experience is really different than ours. We purchased a dairy heifer from them after our boys showed her in our county fair and decided to um, keep her as a family milk cow. And we've officially had the baby for one week now. She gave birth last Wednesday into Thursday night. Really wonderful mama, really easy, or well, we don't know if it was easy, but she did not have any difficulty in terms of having to pull the calf. Um, she was a, she's a Jersey heifer, and I'll link a video in the description that shows how we acquired her and a little bit about this sweet girl. And then she gave birth to a Jersey heifer. She was bred to a low weight Jersey bull, and we just got the cutest little calf out of her. Oh my gosh, she's just adorable. But this morning, being one week into me, milking. I wanted to just take you along with me and show you how it's going, what we've been doing, and what my morning routine looks like. So I'm going to put on this headlamp and get going. So I already got my milk machine put together inside where I wash it. I don't have hot water out at the barn and I milk her um, just on the fence for now. We are gonna get a milking stanchion, but I'm sorry it's so dark. I will try my best to um, show you guys around. For now, this is what we have, and it's not perfect, but that just goes to show that if you are getting started in really anything, it doesn't have to be perfect, especially to get started. You'll learn and adapt, and that learning phase can also help to shape what you hope to see in the future. These mornings have just been beautiful. Oh my goodness. Um, it is fall here in the Ozarks. And I have to say, I'm loving my first week of, of collecting milk and just spending this time outside. I, even when I was hand milking before I got the little machine, I really just sat there and spent some time praying. I may even just go back to hand milking occasionally just just for that respite time. It's uh, a nice time in the mornings. All right, my tack room here. I've got her stuff just sitting right here. Um, I've got a bucket with some items in it. I'll show you what's in here really quick before we get going. Um, we've got her halter and just a few little things here. I've got some Vaseline, some lanolin, pure lanolin. This is so dirty. This is farm work though, you guys. Um, pure lanolin here. It has been amazing, especially this first week as she is getting used to being milked as a first time heifer um, or now cow. She has had just some dryness and some roughness on her teeth and this has helped her so much. I use the Vaseline because this is so rich. I use the Vaseline after evening milkings and I use a lanolin after morning milkings. I've also got, I always keep this um, Fure Zone in my um, oh, equine vet kit. It's really great for just cuts that come up and things like that. I've got a pair of scissors and then of course some fly spray. You don't want her stomping around um, when you're trying to milk. The first thing that I do is I get her feed set up and this is not a sustainable diet for a large number of animals, of dairy cows, <laughs> but this is what we give our girl. Um, I give her a little bit of alfalfa. I give her some oats. The reason for this, a lot of dairy farmers will give this sweet feed. I think it creates bad habits in the animals. They get really feed sour. They get pushy. They get stompy. They get agitated. I don't like how animals act on sweet feed. I don't feed it to my horses. And so I won't be feeding it to my cows 
either. Um, I actually did put her on sweet feed when she first moved over um, to our place because she was on sweet feed before, but I transitioned her off because she was becoming so rude and I cannot stand bad manners around food. So I also give her some vitamin E right now. She, um, this is for equine too, but I'm using it because it's what I have and you can tell we have horses. So, um, she had a little bit of early onset mastitis and that first day the calf just wasn't drinking enough. And within one day she was already showing signs of mastitis and I had to start milking her two days after the calf was born. I was waiting, I was planning on going, starting three days after the calf was born and we just couldn't wait because she was so engorged. And so I'm keeping her on vitamin E just for a little longer to make sure that's all cleared up. I put turmeric in just about everything, all of my animals feed because it just helps with a number of things. It helps with the appearance of their coat and it's a wonderful addition. It doesn't take much. This bag has lasted me forever. Bought it off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. The last thing that I've added here is some beet pulp, and that is just a filler, really. I need to look up more about and research the, the nutritional information on it, but I add the beet pulp. It's what we always give, what I've always given my show cattle to help fill them out before show. Um, I pro I, my guess is that it's probably very carb-based for them, um, but I soak their food. This has a lot of water in it. It's sitting, you can see how wet it is. Um, I always soak that. I just feel like it's more palatable and digestible and keeps them from getting dry mouthed and choking. That's especially true for horses. I don't know if it's as necessary with cows, but I do it anyways. This beet pulp, you can see the dry parts is just so dry that um, I really feel like it needs soaked. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab hay for um, our horse and our donkey and then I'll come back grab these items and get set up to milk. Hi honey, good morning. I usually start right at um, six, but this morning. Oh, hello, say hi. Penny says good morning. Yeah, she's just the cutest little doll. We've been calling her Penny. No, it's my turn to milk. <laughs> Anyways, I usually start right at 6. Um, but this morning, getting around a little bit later, it's a Friday. And I just needed a little more time this morning to get um, ready for the day and get woke up and drink my coffee. Okay, it's still really dark, but I took off my headlamp so I'm not just shining that in your face. Um, I went ahead and got her tied up. I tied her down low um, with her feet in front of her and some hay. And then when she's done with that, I tie her up higher so that she can't stomp and move around. You'll notice um, the video where the video clip where the calf is still drinking from mama. Calf has full access right now to mom. My plan is to separate them at two weeks. The calf is just right over one week old right now. She was born on September 21st. And uh, I just wanna give her a little bit of time. She was really kind of slow starting to eat on those first few days. And I wanna just make sure that she has a really strong start. After that, I haven't decided if I'm gonna put her up at night and then put her back with mom after morning milking or if I'll put her up during the day and turn baby out at night. Um, I'll, I'll probably end up sticking with morning milking, but the thing is this mama cow, um, our girl, beautiful here, produces really good in our evening milkings. So I'm assuming that's because baby is, the calf is drinking a lot more at night, but I'm not 100% sure. So I may experiment with that. And I also, who knows, maybe I'll change it up given the time of year too. Right now, mornings are beautiful, but here in January, February, it is going to be a different story in Northwest Arkansas. You can see the steam coming off of that. This water is still really warm. The first thing I do is I, oops, let me turn it. <laughs> I clean off her teats with, why do we have a fly this early in the morning? 
clean off her teeth really well. She's a pretty clean girl. We have plenty of grass. If she was in the muck and the mud or if it was like really rainy, I would expect this to be dirtier, but I just get her really good and cleaned down. This warm rag also tends to stimulate her milk let down too. And so I just get her nice and clean um, as, as best as possible while she's eating. Usually I've already made, <laughs> I've already got her hooked up by now, but I'm spending time making this video. So it is going to go a little slower this morning. Okay, I'm set up here. I'm not gonna spend much time talking because I've gotta get her hooked up before she gets all stompy and before she finishes her hay, which she's really not too stompy. It's just when she finishes eating, I've gotta get her head tied up, which is difficult to do when she's hooked up um, to these. She's only been milked with this machine. Um, this is our fourth time, so it's still pretty new. You can see the milk coming through. It's not gonna be much um, from these front teats. And also because it's morning, um, but we're getting some milk and uh, we'll get the back teeth now. So the baby does, the calf, I keep calling it a baby, it's kind of a baby. The calf does not drink as much um, during the day and so we get a lot in the evening. It does take it a minute to get going on the back teats, but you can see it's really pouring out of there. And that right one's back left one, her back left, is still kind of getting going. But um, you can see it's really dumping out of this back right. All right. And in true farming fashion, the um, machine died on me, which is fine. I wanted it to go all the way dead before charging it this first time to help the machine's um, battery life. But I get to finish hand milking her back teats. Pretty girl. <laughs> All right, that concludes our first week of milking. I bet we got about two quarts. This is pretty heavy. Um, she has just been a trooper. Her udders have finally softened and she's feeling really good. She's really starting to just settle into milking and I think even enjoy it. So now she's like, okay, let me off so I can finish my hay. So let me get her turned out. <laughs> All right, I would really count our first week of milking here on Smith's Ridge a success. We have collected a lot of milk. We've learned a lot. Already got to encounter mastitis, um, which was thankfully just early onset. I was able to clear it up naturally without any antibiotics. I am thankful to have our grandparents, my grandparents who milked for years, who have a wealth of dairy knowledge, but their operation looked so different than mine because they have, mine is so small compared to theirs. It's almost laughable or it truly is, but not for us because it's special. You know, we've got this raw, fresh, amazing dairy uh, Jersey milk, and it's just incredible. We're gonna do a little bit of direct to consumer selling, um, of course, abiding by Arkansas laws to ensure that those are um, being distributed as they should be. And I'm so excited about that. I'm really excited about this movement where people care about what's in their food and how their food was raised. I think it is just so um, incredibly, incredibly important. And I also wanted to say something I forgot to um, show in the milking process was that you do want to expel a little bit of milk out of their teats to begin with before you start milking because if you don't you could get uh, you know extra dirt and saliva from the calf and you loving it. Mm. <laughs> and carrots mine. <laughs> I got a few other farm chores done. I got my milk machine cleaned up and I've got coffee in hand now. So things are looking up for the day. I hate that that machine died during our video, but that's just how it goes. That's how farm life is. And anytime you're learning something new, I really wanted to take you guys along on this adventure and show you the candid part. So it's not always gonna be perfect, well-planned and beautiful, but it will be real and it will be um, hopefully something that you can learn from while I am learning too. I plan to do another milking video here in a couple of months after I've really got my feet wet 
and have learned even more. I mentioned mastitis a few times in the video, so if you want to see a video about our experience with that, how we cleared it up naturally, please do leave a comment. And guys, if you're enjoying this video, if you've enjoyed watching this vlog style that I've never done before, um, please leave a comment or subscribe to let me know that you've enjoyed it and I'll be sure to make a few more. I'm really enjoying this experience, just um, getting to share some of our behind the scenes and, and sharing our lifestyle with you.